Hello everybody, welcome back to Fanblade. International money markets being what they are, right now as I'm making this video, the New Zealand dollar is at a five year high against the Japanese yen. So it's a really, really good opportunity to get in and buy some uh, cool vintage Japanese bases and other stuff, whatever you want. Uh, there are you know, there are websites that will allow you to do this, uh, and uh, that's how I managed to get these two. Um, this is a fairly standard uh, K-Garage branded P-Base. This cost me the princely sum of 1,000 yen, which currently works out to about 12 New Zealand dollars. Yes. This one cost uh, considerably more than that, but still very, very cheap, considering what it is, even though, yeah, you can probably see all of this is a real mess. I'm going to do a video separately about this, because I've got some plans and I've got some ideas, but uh, for now, I want to focus on this one. So, what am I going to do with a $12 base, I hear you fervently moaning. Well, rip it to bits is the answer. Ordinarily, I wouldn't have wasted the time and the money and the energy to ship a base like this internationally, because... Like, this, it's not like we have any shortage of them in New Zealand. Um, but there's a couple of aspects of this one that set me off to believe that it might be a cut above the really cheap ones that you can get. First of all, the bridge is really solid. It's a really solid bridge. That gave me hope that uh, the rest of the hardware was going to be kind of, you know, like, uh, not super high quality, but, you know, better than the really cheap ones that you get these days because this thing it's i'm guessing 25 30 years old somewhere like that um uh so the the bridge is good the uh, elder body not complaining about that the the rubbish they mil build them out of these days is awful the edges of the fingerboard are nicely rolled everything appears to be in good condition there is nothing about the space that uh put me off everything looks good uh, I've, tu I've tuned it up, I've had a bit of a play, the action's quite high, but it sounds like a P-Base should. <laughs> However, I am still going to rip it to pieces. Essentially, the plan is that the neck, where have I put this? The neck I'm going to use on this body, which I've had hanging around for ages, I have wanted to find a good neck for this body, uh, uh, and uh, I believe I have done that. Also, that bridge... Yeah, I'm going to replace replace the bridge. Um, I'll do some investigating on the pickup. It's got quite sharp edges, uh, so we'll see how that plays out. But then, but then I will have a body, a nice lightweight older body, and I'm going to use that to replace the gargantuan lead weight that purports to be made of ash on the old artist 5-string. I hate this thing. The only thing I like about it is the neck, which is going on this body. 5-string, 4-string, Bartolini 5-string P-Bass pickup. So, this is all, which by the way, that fits in the footprint of a 4-string. But there's, I'll talk, I'll talk about the, uh, the pole piece spacing later. Basically we're doing a three-way Frankensteining of uh, some bass guitars and hopefully we'll get two really good ones at the end and this one, yeah, well, we'll, we'll talk about that a bit later on. Anyway. Here's a clue. 1997 DEM. Whatever that means. Um, uh, DE. I'm going to have to Google that. Uh, like, at this price point, I very much doubt this is a made in Japan base. Um, but at least we've got a proper age for it now. 1997. That's nice. Um, also, my fear that this might have been a plywood body. Nah. That's genuine older all the way in. Oh, I'm I'm very I'm very happy with that little bit of packing material. Or what's that? Is a little bit of strapping as a, as a shim. You get that sometimes. Uh, right, I'm going to quickly Google that and see what it says. 
And I'm back from Googling, and uh, there's not a whole lot of information. It, I punched in DEM guitar, DEM guitar factory, DEM bass, DEM manufacturing. Uh, the, uh, honestly, I've got every result under the sun from all over the world. Uh, the nearest I can figure is that it's probably uh, Indonesian or Vietnamese. Like, that's as good as I can get. And that's fine. You know, I, I wouldn't have expected it to be a, a Japanese-made bass. Uh, certainly not at this price. K, K Garage, I wonder if the K stands for Korea? Possibly. Who knows? It's a mystery. Maybe somebody out there uh, will know. First and easiest thing to do here will be to get the body that I actually want to use. And see if everything lines up. Now, this body was a Hondo base. It is made in Japan. Uh, I had initially thought these were an early variety of Damasio pickups. They are not. I have got some Damasio pickups on the way for that base. That's pretty much a perfect fit. Let's see how the scale lengths line up. 432, uh, which would make uh, 864. And that is coming in at 870. All right, so the scale length uh, works out roughly. These uh, I will need to put the new bridge a little bit further forward, just a just a smidge. just take a moment to uh, admire this thing that's a you know it's a good solid bridge as compared to the old one you can see the uh, base is much thicker uh, the saddles are much better it's actually got machine screws there's a heck heck hex head machine screws in there um uh, amazing oh, what do they weigh 193 grams And that's 361 grams. Excellent. Also, just just because we're looking at them, check out the difference in the screws. That's just, this thing's... Ah, I'm very happy to have that on this body. Yes. trying to clean the bridge and there appears to be crud almost as if it's kind of baked on I like I don't know if that's corrosion I don't know if there's something in the uh, uh, like the climate in Japan uh, a lot of the chrome work tends to go a little bit manky over time um, uh, but whatever it is it doesn't want to come off um, wax and grease remover wouldn't touch it acetone wouldn't touch it I'm pulling out the naphtha and if that doesn't touch it, then I'll just have to learn to live with it. And uh, the the peak takes it. I must stress, I am not sponsored by by peak. Um, I, I have some of their product and it just seemed to work. <laughs> that was just encrusted with filth and, and none of the solvents I had would work. Um, uh, and so, yeah, there we go. It's, it's non-abrasive and it's just, it's just the best, isn't it? Other metal polishes are available. This video is not sponsored. But Peak, if you're watching, get in touch. Thank you.
and uh, there is the before and after shot and yeah I'm just super impressed with the stuff don't have much more to say about that until they pay me <laughs>
just uh, very carefully file a bit off here, file a bit off there, test fit and repeat until it's lined up perfectly and drops in nice and tight. So uh, yeah, it, it's a slow process, but you know, if you creep up on it, you will get to exactly where you want to be. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the magic that Bartolini have worked to cram a five-string pickup into two identical uh, uh, units like this. Essentially, this one's got uh, magnets running all the way across it. This one stops there. There is no magnet in this area. So as the, uh, the center string, the A string, I think, yes, A string, uh, comes across those two, it's only getting picked up by this one. So even though these are humbucking, that you know the a string is not going to get cancelled out on itself um uh, that's what bartolini claim on their website i have tested it it is correct i made one of these this is a prototype of a, uh, a magnetic um, indicator uh, for lack of a better word it's uh, three sheets of acrylic with iron filings in, in a cutout in the middle it's almost impossible to film uh, you can't really uh, tell the difference between the, the, the grey of the iron, iron filings versus the black of the pickups and shiny surfaces are hard to film at the best of times anyway. Um, but I can clearly see uh, the magnetic field uh, on this pickup stops about there, whereas this one, yeah, it's uh, moving those filings in an even pattern right across the entire length of the pickup. So uh, that's good. That's uh, that's how Bartolini do it. I'm, I'd be interested to dive a little bit deeper and find out what they have to do. If this magnet is shorter, do they add more windings? Do they do something different to match the impedance to get it to humbuck correctly but to still have the same output as each other? It's an interesting thing. I want to investigate that more. Not today though. Right now I am measuring the scale length and putting the bridge on because we're nearly done. Right, it might be time for a wee jam. Right, I've just had a good play on the thing, then I came back in here and put a shim in because it did need one, set the intonation, set the action up, went back and had another play, and I lost about half an hour just jamming on it. It's great. <laughs> Thank you. 
So there you go, that's everything you could want from a 5 string P bass, it's got a really nice neck on it, uh, it's, uh, it's it's light enough, it, uh, the final weight clocks in at about 4.4 kg, so that's perfectly fine, um, and everything that you would expect from the Bartolini is all the, the, the warmth and the cut through that, uh, uh, that a Bartolini should need. I should add, the pickup specifically is the Bartolini 58CBP. 5 string classic bass thick tone split coil pair yeah so they are highly recommended now um, the reason why I chose that pickup is because I've actually done pretty much this exact thing before this bass is an amalgamation of parts um, the neck was off a really dodgy Chinese Fender jazz copy uh, and the body was just absolutely horrifying um, so I uh, bought a cheap P bass the same Bartolini pickup, it's exactly the same as this one, and it's the five string, it's the fretless variation of this one. So uh, that's a variation that I, I rather enjoy having a sort of matched pair, if you like, of uh, fretted and fretless instruments. In fact, the original neck from this one wound up on this Epiphone Les Paul, because the original neck was twisted, and I wanted a fretless uh, uh, neck on a Les Paul bass to go with my fretted Les Paul bass. We're noticing a pattern including fretted and fretless violin basses. And of course I own a genuine Rickenbacker. Therefore, you can probably tell what's coming in the next video. Thank you very much for watching, thank you very much for subscribing. I'll see you when I finally get around to doing something with this one. Cheers.